Hello everybody, welcome to the kitchen. Not doing a cooking video today, but we are getting involved in beekeeping. I'm looking forward to it. I've had the idea for a while and hopefully I enjoy it. I really like the idea of fresh local honey. Uh, local honey helps your immune system. It helps uh, if you have allergies, it helps prevent those allergies and you know me being me it's just another thing to to occupy my time with because I have so much free time but anyway you need some basic tools to get started I just bought this this is a pretty uh, basic kit I guess I found it on Amazon there's a couple different kits out there with different things in them obviously uh, this one is made by Bee Castle as are a lot of the other ones and the MSRP is not remotely indicative of what I paid for it. This was $35. And for the price, I think it was pretty good. It's cl clearly made in China, but I don't think there's going to be any issue with the tools. So let's go through what's in there. First, there's a couple uh, hive tools. It comes with three different hive tools. Here's one of them, painted red so you can see it if you drop it. Here's a second one. This one seems to be the most common, judging by the beekeeping videos that I've seen. And then here is the third. So as I use these, I'll see which one I like most. They all seem fine. This one tool is a little bit thicker than the rest of them. And also the edges, the you know, this has been stamped out and then the edges ground smooth but the corners are quite sharp so you'll want to hit those with a file before you use it because it might uh, cut you or or uh, cut your gloves or, or whatever. They all seem to be fairly stiff material no uh, Chinese cheese metal here well I'm sure it is cheese metal but slightly higher grade. Then there are three different uncapping tools this is the first one I'm, I'm most interested in this one this is an uncapping comb, so when you get your full frame of honey, you need to take the caps off of the comb so you can spin the honey out. This one, you know, here's a close-up. It's just stamped out of some cheap uh, sheet metal, stainless steel sheet metal, and the tines are ground and stamped in there. Just visually, it's not super high quality. This isn't something that you're going to be looking forward to handing down to your grandson, but it seems to work, or seems to look like it'll work just fine. I like this because it uses a pulling action, and pulling, generally speaking, for the human body, pulling is a little bit more controllable than pushing. Here's the other style of uncapping comb. And again, you know, this this you'll have to push rather than pull, but it seems like it it you know might work maybe for getting in the corners or something. Here's a third uncapping tool. This is an uncapping knife, basically a big serrated bread knife. Serrated on both edges, also beveled on both edges. I I assumed one side would be flat so you can get it right up against the the frame, but I suppose that's not an issue. You can just angle the knife a bit or whatever. The problem with these is that the top, uh, all the caps on your on your frame or other on your comb, won't be perfectly even. So this might take off too much of the high spot and not enough of the low spot. But with the three different tools, I'm sure I'll find my favorite. Or you know, most likely use a combination of all three. Next thing the kit comes with two of these. These are beetle traps. And even though it came in this cheap kit, I actually like these a little bit more than the name brand Beetle Blaster. It's the same general construction. It's just a little container. You fill the bottom with oil, like a vegetable oil or something like that. And if there's hive beetles in there, the bees will force and shoo the beetles out to the corners of the hive, which is where you've placed these. And the beetles will try to find a little secluded place to hide in. They'll go into these little slots and then drown in the oil. The problem with the Beetle Blaster brand is that they're disposable. Once they're filled up, you throw them away. The tops do not come off, so you can't dump them and you can't wash them. But with these, you just pop off the top, dump it out, clean it out, and you're done. So I think that's, that's pretty nice. And 
if these work, I'll probably see if I can buy more of them rather than the name brand ones. You also get a B brush in the kit. The B brush is just a very, very soft brush so you can brush the honeybees off of a comb that you pull out, or off of a frame rather. It seems to look fine. It's definitely low quality. There's bristles or stray bristles sticking out everywhere, but eh, you know what? It's still a brush and it'll still work just fine to gently brush bees off the frame if you're going to take that frame for extracting the honey. You also get a frame gripper. It seems fairly sturdy. Decent spring action in the handles. Again, just stamped out of some stainless steel. Stamped edges really aren't too bad. They're not sharp or anything like the hive tools. Handles aren't the most comfortable. The corners are somewhat rounded. But it looks like it should work just fine if I need this rather than just using my hands to pull a frame out of a hive. You also get these two uh, queen bee marking tools in the kit, which I think is more of an advanced thing rather than a beginner. Uh, you know, I'm buying a package of bees and it comes with a marked queen, so I don't need to mark her or anything. But I suppose you will need this if your hive swarms or if you want to, if you have an unmarked queen or whatever. You get this hair clip like thing to capture the queen bee. And I suppose what you do, you put her in here, and there's a soft foam ended plunger to push her down to the, to the bottom, and there's a mesh grate on the bottom where you can apply some marking paint. Since it did come with this, I really wish it came with a little thing of marking paint as well. I don't know what you're supposed to use for marking. You want to use something non-toxic, obviously, and also something that'll not wear off. So that'll be something I'll have to buy separately if I do ever need this. Last thing the kit comes with are some gloves, and these actually seem pretty decent. It's definitely a one-size-fits-all glove. I have like a medium hand and kind of skinny fingers, but this fits pretty well. If you have a real big hand and sausage fingers, this might be a little tight for you. But the leather is nice. It's pliable. It fits pretty well. I've tried on plenty of Harbor Freight gloves, just, you know, random work gloves, and they're, they're crap. And, of course, those are made in China just like this is, as I'm sure. They're, eh, maybe it's made in Thailand. I don't know. I think China. But they fit well, and of course they'll work just fine as gloves. Now, I found it strange the one thing this kit did not come with is a, a veil, a beekeeping veil. There were some pricier kits that came with a veil and an entire bee suit, but even though I'm a beginner, I, I really don't feel the need for an entire bee suit. Um, I, you know, I'll just, I'll take the hit if I get stung, you know, it's not going to kill me, I'm not allergic or anything. And, you know, just wear long sleeves, I think that should be okay. But, you, but I think a veil would be good, especially for a beginner. And there's a lot of fairly expensive ones out there, at least on Amazon, most were 40 or $50. This El Cheapo was, I think, 20 bucks. It came all crunched flat in the package, you see the crown of the hat is all mashed, but, you know, it fits just the same. It's pretty nice actually, you know, it has this ring on the bottom to keep the mesh away from your face. Elastic on the very bottom to keep it around your neck and collar. And I don't know if they all come with this, but these elastic shoulder straps to really hold this down against your, against your neck. And that about covers it everybody. That's, that's everything that comes in the kit and that's everything that I think I'm going to need to start my beehive. Well, of course, with the exception of the hive itself, I do have that. I'll be doing a separate video on the assembly and review of that hive. And in the spring, we're going to get some bees and see how it goes. So, hope you like this. Hope if, there, if there's some beginner beekeepers out there, or wannabe beginner beekeepers, maybe this will uh, point you in the right direction or give you a little motivation to go and do this yourself. Self-sufficiency is great. Find something you like to do. If you make a shitload of honey, you can trade your excess honey to some other local guy who has something else that you need. Someone who raises cows, maybe, and you can get some beef or milk. And you can create your own local, sustainable um, agriculture. And I think that's pretty important in this day and age. We've gotten very, very far removed from that. We rely on big farms and uh, GMO everything and 
hormone filled everything and that may prove itself to be not healthy for us and not sustainable and you're putting your you're, you're putting your reliance in these huge these huge farms and these huge uh, food distribution chains and it seems to work pretty well it's worked well for the past couple decades but uh, you think about it, it's kind of a delicate balance if something fucks up the transportation end of the chain or the fertilizing part of the growing or the harvesting or whatever I mean take a look what's happening now with this virus hoax everything's fucked up and there's shortages of a number of things I mean we're, we're, we're how many you know we're almost a year into this disaster and, and look I mean you, you still have a hard time finding toilet paper for Christ's sake so uh, you do what you can to to keep yourself living as well as possible so anyway Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you want to keep up to date with this project and my many others. And hit the like button if you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching and as always come on back for more.